Good morning. I want to give lessons or now courses on dosimetry fundamentals and then also details for calibration with photons and electrons and later on we will do or perform an exercise. These lectures do not exactly fit to the time schedule which was given to me. So I take the freedom that we will stop at uh, 10 minutes before one, then we have lunch. But I will not still finish my lecture. I will continue later on. And I take the freedom to move freely with my time because I have a lot of time for electron dosimetry, which is the smallest one of them. So let's start. So this is a content I want to, just to say this once more, I, I will tell you, especially for those who are working in the field of radiotherapy, you are familiar with many of the things. Nevertheless, I will repeat them and offer to you. What I want to discuss is this term radiation dose. We are always saying the dose and we, as physicists, we should at least be aware of the precise meaning of what is dose and what is the definition of dose. Uh, I want to give general methods for dose measurements. And there I want to discuss these principles of dosimetry with ionization chambers. In my eyes, dosimetry with ionization chambers is still by far the most important one because, because why? What is, what may be the reason why it is so important, I think from a physical point of view. The reason is that we, we understand the details, the physical details much better than any others. Do we really understand a diet? Uh, have you, who, who, is a who is a physicist who has learned solid state physics? Oh, awful. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it can be awful. It, it's, it's quantum mechanics, and it's, it's not easy to understand. The same with a diamond. I think we don't know exactly understand how a diamond works. A film dosimetry, how it really works with that. Oh. <laughs> and then the development. All these physical processes are, are quite complex, and uh, it's easy to use, but to really understand and then to describe them in mathematical formulas, how the energy deposition goes up into our signal is not always so easy. With ionization chamber, it's much more easy. Still, we do not understand everything. It's still, I do not understand. Having, having been studied ionization dosimetry for 30 years. Principles, uh, dose in air, stopping power conversion into dose in water, but uh, completing sensor ethics formulation. So this is what I have used. This is this uh, famous book from the agency. And this is also a very, very good book. I think it's, uh, it's in my eyes, it's the best textbook available now for medical physicists, handbook of radiotherapy. And it was issued by uh, Mays, Mahan, and Rosenwald. By the way, I just, uh, maybe you know that, but you can uh, get the book directly from the agency website and you can also get uh, slides which are based on that. These this slides may be helpful if you are o do your own teaching and if, just to say that, because I was involved in this uh, pro uh, preparation of the sliding, if someone really needs a source files, I'm free to give it also as, as PowerPoint files in order that if you want to use it as a teacher, you can change them in your ways and you can improve them. Then it's better to use this uh, power, uh, the, the PDF files. So exact physical meaning of dose of radiation. So as I already said, dose may be a little bit sloppy and it's in a dose of radiation is currently known by the physical, a physical well-defined crystal quantity of absorbed dose B. And the definition of this is given in this report number 60, uh, which is here, but now we have a new one. So this is the new IP report number 85. And in this 
report, and I can really strongly recommend you to get this ISO report, which is summarizing the fundamentals of what are the physical quantities required in radiology. It's not so much, but this is the most important source for that. According to that, the absorbed dose is defined by a ratio of the mean energy imparted to a matter of mass divided by a small element of mass. The unit is, of course you know, joule per kilogram, and the special name is gram. So we can a little bit discuss it now, because they are combined with this definition. There are some characteristics, and I have put here four characteristics. Number one is, the term energy imparted can be considered to be radio and absorbed in a volume in such a way that the energy absorbed is that what the radiation energy coming into the volume minus the energy going out of the volume, radiation energy, plus some other energies which may occur if there are processes which are releasing mass for instance, if you are creating a new particle, so then you have to put out the energy of the radiation in order to create the mass and vice versa. So there may be some changes of energy of radiation and that has all be taken into account in this definition. The term absorbed dose refers to an exactly defined volume. That is so important. So if you think in dose, you always think in terms of a volume or a, a mass with a certain volume. So not a point. A point in a mathematical sense has no volume, despite the fact it is, it is de uh, uh, defined as a differential ratio. You have to think in volumes. For those who are working as uh, in, in Monte Carlo, they are, they are quite familiar with that. You, you cannot calculate the dose in a point. You have to calculate the dose in a volume. You have to define the volume for that first. Next point is, it refers to the material of the volume. So absorbed dose always refers, so it may be the dose in air, or it may be dose in water, or whatever. It may be dose in tissues. And I think uh, many of them are, you are familiar with this discussion. In treatment planning, what is important? Do we calc should we offer to the doctors the information on the dose in tissue or in water? We have always done in water. We have always used the term absorb dose to water. But of course, it is not water. It maybe it is bones, whatever, it's soft tissue. So maybe a better concept to, to use this Especially, and that is also again important, treatment planning systems, modern treatment planning systems, which are all already commercially available, they are introducing Monte Carlo techniques. And in Monte Carlo, it's much more directly to, to calculate the dose in the volume of the tissue of the patient, or some approximation. They, they, they calculate the dose in the tissue. So to get, they get now the dose distribution in tissue and bones. So now they have to translate it into our old-fashioned water absorbed dose. So just to, to, to see that, that, that dose, absorbed dose, refers to a material. Next one, that is very interesting. The dose, absorbed dose, is a quantity which is steadily in space and time. That means it is a, a, a quantity you can differentiate. Yeah? So it is, it, a, it is defined in a point. It refers to a point. And if you look to that, that may be a contradiction to, to what I said, it refers to a, to a volume. So what about this thing? We have absorbed dose referring to a point, you can say uh, uh, this is expressed in this R vector, uh, and, but at the same time it refers to a volume. 
So in order to understand this a little bit more closer, I want to discuss now a little bit more background on what's really going on in the region, and especially if we have this uh, definition. This question is the synonym to the question of what energy imparted is. So you, you know uh, the verb dose def is defined by the energy imparted. So the question is we need a definition now for energy imparted. And here's a definition. The energy imparted to matter in a given volume is the sum of all energy deposit in the volume. Quite nice. We have one definition, and we substitute it for, with another definition, with another quantity, the energy deposit. Maybe that is, again, not really helping. So we have to, again. But let's see what, what is meant with that. I have made this picture. So we have photons coming from the left side, and there is a Compton effect. So we have created secondary electrons here, and that is so. Or again, we have another one, which is a photo effect, another one photo effect. So that happens if tissue or water is irregulated. So in regard to our definition, now we have to introduce a volume. And what is energy imparted? Oh, why it's not coming? Uh, oh, here. Let's go back one. This is an important step. The energy imparted is all the energy. Just to, to, to remind you, if an, e if an electron is traversing to material, is, it is giving energy continuously all the way. The famous question is, why electrons have a final range in contrast to photons? Photons are exponentially decreasing. Why photons, uh, why electrons have a final range? Very simple. Hmm? Why? Yeah, OK. They are losing the energy, and then it's gone. Then they have to stop. That's a very nice question to, to medical uh, students, because we also have to teach the medical, phys uh, the, the medical uh, students and they need some understanding for that. And it's such a simple question. They all, <laughs> it's so simple. And it really, it, it helps to understand why or what is the process with the charged particles. They continuously are losing energy. So this is uh, the illustration that the electrons are continuously losing, losing energy. And only this part, which is within the volume, this is the energy imparted. So this is not energy imparted here, and that is also energy imparted the volume. So this is a clear illustration of what is meant by energy imparted, what we need for the definition of absorbed dose. So and this uh, the energy imparted is a sum of all elemental energy deposits by those basic interaction processes which have been occurred in the volume during a time interval considered. So this is the formula. This, are, this is our energy imparted. And these are the single energy deposits. So we need a definition of what, what is an energy deposit. And um, again, we, we use this formula. But what is important now, it refers to a single interaction process between the particle, the photons, or electrons, and the medium. So we have single interaction process. And with each interaction process, we are looking on this equation. We have energy going into. Again, we can imagine a very small volume. Some energy is going out when we have, again, change of energy. And I give three examples. Electron knock-on interaction, pair product, and photon annihilation. So we have here an electron coming into in this very small uh, volume. And we have the primary electron, and we have a secondary electron. And this way, it's a quite good question. What is a primary electron, and what is a secondary electron? Can we, can we see what is a primary? Uh, can, we, can we associate one is a primary and one is secondary? 
No, by this is something which is again basic physics. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, but which one? How we can dis? Uh, you see, you, we have a knock-on process, and two electrons are coming out. Which one is primary? Which one is secondary? It's a very simple. It's a higher energy we call the primary. <laughs> very simple. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, there may be some process here. Uh, fluorescence radiation may come out, and e even all J electrons may come out. And this now is the formula. The energy, the energy deposition is the energy, the kinetic energy coming in uh, with these electrons, and these are now escaping. So all these terms are going out. So this is now a definition of an energy deposit of a single event. Another one is uh, we have photon radiation uh, creating two electrons. And uh, this is now another formula. The energy deposit is the energy of the photon. Then these energies of the electrons are escaping, but we also have to, to um, uh, subtract the amount of energy to create these two. And this is another one, absorb those. Uh, it is a positron and annihilation process. And again, we had such a formula. Just to say now, I think we have now a better understanding what an energy deposit is. Can be very different in size and, and type and so on. Again, this is a formula. Energy of the incident ionized uh, particle, excluding the rest energy, the sum of energies leaving and the change of rest energy. Now we can, this was theory, really. <laughs> but very simple, what if you do a measurement, we are simply adding together all this. We, our, our measurement signal is proportional to the imparted energy. OK, now. A thing which is not so well aware, but I think it is important, especially if you are thinking in things now in what really happens in tissue or in a cell or in an enzyme, what, what really happens there. Uh, I have offered you the illustration of different energy deposits, and it's very clear that the energy deposit, one single, can be quite different in size. So and we never know which will come first because it's a stochastic process. This again, this is uh, the principle of physics. Uh, if there's some um, probability for a process, but we don't, we cannot say this single photon will have this type of interaction. It will have some probability for anyone. OK. <laughs> so if, if we add up stochastic quantities, the result will also be stochastic. Yeah. So our energy imparted is stochastic. And what does it mean? It means that with respect to repeated measurements of energy imparted, that's what you really measure, it means that it will never have the same value. Is that really true? It's something strange if you do a dose measurement. You expect that if you do a careful measurement, you want to have an accuracy or uncertainty, say, of, point of 1%, and it should be not, not change. This, the answer is very simple. If you have a, a huge number of, 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 uh, of um, deposits, then on average, they will be almost not change. But in certain cases, you can, you can see changes. And when, of course, if the number of events is small, and when is the number, under what conditions the number of, of deposits is small? Is the tector is small, or if the dose rate is small? Dose rate is small in radiation protection. So in radiation protection, we have such problems. The detector is small. If we measure those, the detector normally is not small. So even if you go to one millimeter, 
time or say one centimeter diameter. But you can you can you can use a detector which has reduced pressure, air pressure. And there are some detectors are available. You can they are called so-called Rossi counters that are filled with say with with a equivalent uh, tissue equivalent uh, gas. And the pressure is only say one hundred uh, one 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 over hundred of normal pressure. And if you do measurements of that, you will see a huge <laughs> variation. And it's interesting. So if you are interested in, in study such variations, you could use there's a method uh, technique available, which has been introduced 30, 40 years ago. It's called microdosimetry. So microdosimetry is a, spe a, spe a special discipline which is dealing with this thing. And the other thing, of course, is what is happening in a cell, what is happening in, in the size of, of, of a DNA, of course. <laughs> so you, if you, you cannot really speak of absorbed dose within a, in a small cell, it will be, have some variation. And the variation can be huge. It can be, say, it can be, if you, if you apply one gray, it, in a small size, it could be 0.5 gray, but really small. So in radiation, in radiation biology, it may be important to take such things in account, but not for normal dosimetry. As normal medical physicists, we will never, never came across with this thing. But I think it's quite interesting to know that, that this, we have this variation. And I show, I show you this one picture. It's showing the ratio of energy imparted by the mass, and now the mass is here, uh, really a big mass. And then it's, it's going on smaller and smaller, and you see that, that the energy imparted is, is really strongly uh, a variation. It's a famous graph, which is taken from textbook 30, 40 years ago. And I think it's, I like this picture because it underlines the, 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 the knowledge that that this is the case of energy imparted. So, and this is the reason why this is not the correct definition, but it's a mean value. By, because I, I, I am telling you, in, in just to <laughs> explain, it's defined, the absorbed dose is defined by the mean value of the energy imparted. And thus, by this definition, it is now a quantity which refers to a point in which is steadily in time and which can differentiate it. So this mean value is quite important here. So the energy imparted is a stochastic quantity and the absorbed dose is a non-stochastic quantity. This is the, the, the conclusion from that. So in, in, in textbooks, especially for, for, for radio assistant, you always see this, uh, this definition. Uh, it's DE. So it's just to say this, it's not quite correct. And I, as if you are in the role of a teacher, I think you should really use the, the, the exact definition according to the ISU report. Now we have a precise idea what is meant with dose radiation. There, there are all the other dosimetrical quantities. And one important, oh, OK, yeah, so we have just time. One important example is karma. And this is a definition which is, again, taken directly out of this ISO report. And I think we have to read it. The karma is a quotient by DE. And this DE with TR is the sum of the initial kinetic energy of all charged particles liberated by uncharged particles in a mass of material. Again, it has the same, the same uh, unit. It is joule per kilogram, and it's also again gray. So this is again our illustration of, of absorbed dose. So an absorbed dose is, is here uh, coming photons, and we all here have the uh, energy deposits by the electrons and everything which is within this volume is taken as for the definition of absorbed dose. 
And again, this part of energy is not taken and this was not taken. So this is the energy absorbed in this example. Another one. Oh, so no, let's show that here we have we have an ah, let's go to that one. Here is another one uh, interaction which is outside of the volume and the secondary electron is going through then this part is also counting. So this is now the karma and we have almost the same uh, structure of, of, of uh, secondary electrons created by the photons. And now we are taking the kinetic energy, the initial kinetic energy of each of these electrons and put this together, and the karma is the sum of all these kinetic energies. So, and remember, this is outside the volume, and therefore it's not counting. So all this energy is not counting for the karma. What is important is the difference between absorbed dose, the definition, and karma. Absorb those we want to measure, and I think we can measure it. Not always directly, but we have our ionization chamber, and finally we will get the information absorbed dose, or we can diet or whatever. Can we measure the karma? We should differentiate between the energies in the detector which are created outside. We cannot. It's very difficult. So the typical difference is um, that karma can be calculated and the absorbed dose can be measured. On the contrast, absorbed dose is not easy to, to really to, cal to calculate. There are some exceptions with Monte Carlo where you, or, where you can do but still, still it's some approximation there, some tiny approximation. But the definition of absorbed dose is made to have a quantity to be measured. The definition of karma is made to be calculated. And here are the uh, way how it can be calculated. If we have our interaction coefficients. There are a number of interaction coefficients available which describe what happens in total if a photon is interacting with material. So we have the attenuation coefficient, we have the energy transfer coefficient, or we have the energy absorbed coefficient. So this is the most important coefficient. And the calculation follows always a very simple rule. If we know the fluence differential in energy, if we multiply the fluence with the energy itself, then it's called the energy fluence. And if we calculate it with this um, interaction coefficient, and this, this has to be divided by the, dens uh, by the uh, density factor rho, then it's called the mass uh, energy transfer coefficient. Then this product, and you have to integrate this over all energies, then this is the karma. This is uh, the definition of karma. And if we want to be more realistic to be what maybe stay in the volume and not es uh, escape from the volume, you should Take, you should take into account only which is uh, given by the energy absorbed coefficient. So the difference between the energy transfer coefficient on one side and energy absorption coefficient is just that the energy which is going into radiation and is escaping is not counted, is taken away. So we have just to, to remind you, we have other dosimetric quantities compared to absorbed dose. Typically here, karma and collision karma, which are, these are for photons. And as I already told you, absorbed dose is a quantity which is accessible mainly by measurement. 
and CARM is a dosimetrical quantity which cannot be measured but calculated only based on knowledge of photon fluence differential and energy. So let's look now uh, on, on the absorbed dose which are coming from charged particles. Charged particles, that means normally electrons. For calculations of dose, which are created by charged particles, we need to introduce the concept of stopping power. And again, this is our ICU report, which is saying what is the mass stopping power. The mass stopping power of a material for charged particles, so stopping power only refers to charged particles of a given type and energy, is the quotient by, the, by E and uh, rho, DL, del is the, where E is the mean energy lost by charged particles in traversing a distance DL in a material of density rho. See, again, we have a definition of energy, which is the mean energy lost. Again, the, the, this is refers to, to the overall process. It's, again, a non-stochastic uh, character or a description of the energy uh, uh, process which goes from radiation into uh, material. The stopping mass can be expressed as a sum of independent components, and we have three which are given here, and this is the explanation. This is the called the mass electronic or collision stopping power due to interactions with atomic electrons resulting in interactions. The second one is the mass radiation stopping power due to emission of Bremsstrahlung uh, in the electric field of atomic nuclear or atomic electrons. And we have also a mass nuclear stopping power. So we have also some interaction from the electrons with the nucleus, which is a, if the energy of the electrons is small, it's not so important. But we have three components. And again, this is the most important or the most interesting in why this component is small, and this component, if we think on our volume, absorbed dose, it's escaping from the volume. We are interested in absorbed dose, so this one is the most interesting part. So why stopping power is such an important concept to see there are two answers, energy lost at the same time as energy absorbed. Wonderful. And there's a fundamental relationship between absorbed dose from charged particles and the mass electron stopping power. For this, the, there is another introduction of an of an uh, dosimetric quantity which is called Chema. Who knows that? I'm afraid no one. It's, it, it does not play an important role. But the people who has written the ISU report, there is someone, they are insist we have to include the Chema. <laughs> The chamber is given here, this explanation. The chamber for ionization, charged particle, is the quotient again. It's very similar to the karma uh, definition. But what is interesting in is that the, that the chamber is, can be calculated by, again, our, the fluence of the electrons, differential energy, times the electronic stopping power. So if we know the fluence of electrons by some way, by calculation, by Monte Carlo calculation, for instance, we multiply this with the stopping power, we can calculate the gamma, and the gamma, you see, is very similar to the absorbed dose. So what we can say is absorbed dose from electrons can be calculated with this way. Therefore, this is important to have also this introduction. So and this is summary now, a very uh, summary which I, ah, that's good, it fits with that time. On, on, on the first part, energy absorption and absorbed dose, uh, this is the definition of absorbed dose. This is the definition of energy imparted being the sum of energy deposit. And the energy deposits are referring to single interactions with this balance of energy energy coming in, energy coming out, and some changes of fresh energy. 
and also which I think is interesting. It's not necessary to know, it's nice to know, but to know is the energy absorption is a stochastic process. So I think I will make a break now because now it's time for lunch and I will simply continue after the lunch with this course. Yeah? Well, the, uh, the, the time is uh, because uh, 12.50, lunch break, 14.10, 14.10, 10 minutes after two, I will continue.